Um, so we'll start with, so we see, I see Abe, I see William, excellent stuff, and Anthony. Um, Anthony, is that Anthony Douglas? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can hear you. There's a, there's a bit of background noise there. There's going to be background noise because we're in my classroom at the moment. What we might need to do is I, I, I actually can't upstairs. Let me see, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, William, can you um, can you say that again? I I muted Anthony. I think it's Anthony Douglas, but there was a lot of noise behind Anthony. So, uh, William, can can you repeat what you just said before? And William, you're muted, so you'd have to unmute yourself. William, um, can you hear me? Nice, nice. I think William got booted off. Hey, but can you hear me? Can you, uh, Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so let's get started then um, and see who's here. So, so the idea of a design sprint is that we work collaboratively on a design project with, with a lot of different people online. Now we don't have too many people right now, so obviously we. What I think probably the biggest thing that needs to happen at this point is that we want to train more people like I would see, like the promise of, of the OSE clubs in different locations providing the, the bodies but right now it's really critical that you you understand uh, basic CAD and the basic development process because those are the, the big tools you know there's a whole tool set whole collaborative literacy of how, how people go and people on the dev team they kind of understand that how we work collaboratively on cloud docs and everything else and then combining that with free, free CAD. So, so we can focus this time around on, so this is, we're talking about the D3D Mini for the topic of this design sprint and actually coming up with the part libraries. So, so collecting the part libraries for a D3D Mini and then generating uh, the actual design and 3D print files. So uh, for D3D Mini, we, we want to have a, so the basic infrastructure there is uh, D3D Mini page on a wiki. Uh, which is, and I'll share. I'll share my screen so you guys can follow what I'm doing. Okay, so we start with the D3D Mini PVC um, page. So if you, it, how do you find that? You can type in D3D Mini PVC, uh, simple PVC frame version of the the 3D printer, like the simplest, lowest cost 3D printer with about a 200. $250 bill of materials cost, um, which is half the cost of <clears throat> of the full performance printer. If you go to the 
design sprint page you can also find this page under design sprints and the current design sprint log under november 2 2018. so we want to go to the the working doc um and open that up because we can we can then edit it collaboratively and we can put in all the the part libraries uh just one we have to define how we div divvy up the work on part libraries and second we have to actually create that part library within uh the wiki itself so um so let's look at role division uh so there's yeah it looks like william got booted off so you got only two of you guys <coughs> <clears throat> Anthony, can you um let's see. Let's see what we got on Anthony. Okay. Okay, so we gotta leave it too. Okay, so maybe we can set up the, the process <clears throat> process here. Yeah, so, the question I had is is it, um, yeah. it looks like all the parts exist already for the, for the mini or whatever the size is, and then we just need to design the frame around the, yeah. the existing part and those, mainly those custom holder parts. That's right. Uh, plus Co it looks like other parts that are missing, maybe. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, uh, so corners... Now let's save it into yes we want to do save it at the D3D part library but actually I'm going to cross I'm going to cross it out let's save it let's work all so you don't get too confused going to too many pages let's go to the actual D3D mini PVC um so so instead of that okay let's get the cross out uncrossed Uh, instead, go to the <clears throat> D3D Mini PVC, and then the nomenclature that would be part library. So that would be a section on the wiki. So first, let's yeah. So the size of frame we want to end up with 12 inches. So that would be our standard uh, for the frame. Now. Um, so basically, like part, we can start by saying, okay, here's the part list, and AB kind of mentioned. So we have to reframe everything. I don't know what the mini is right now, but we need to have it so it fits on a 12-inch frame. And the frame currently, as saved on a D3 mini PVC page, that is 13 inches right now, so we need to shrink that down. So upload a new version of that file. But everything that we do, let's upload that to the to the wiki, so that we are yeah yeah william uh can you i know cut you off there yeah good good now uh, yeah what, what's up on your side so i just wanted to introduce two of my students excellent they just sit in and observe this time yeah and those are caitlin and connie caitlin and connie yes hi hi caitlin and connie i'm caitlin all right, Caitlin and Connie. So you can you can kind of follow the the process here. Uh, so do, do I understand it that so you guys are starting to learn FreeCAD? Okay. All right. So let's yeah we'll we'll just continue going. So you can maybe like you know look at what we're doing here, and I'm sharing my screen so you can take a look at that. So we've got the working doc. <clears throat> We're on the D3D Mini PVC so page on the OSC uh, Wiki. More uh, upcoming times, but yeah. thank you very much. Notes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, so, definitely. Uh, I mean, I'll be back with my class and do that. Okay, that sounds good. That's why we're we're gonna train you up so you can run this kind of like if I if I wasn't doing this the goal from the three day immersion is that you'd actually learn enough to run one of these meetings because there's some basic protocols that we can do to get a lot of people collaborating at the same time if they have the basic knowledge of how to do it. Okay, so we start by um, one we have a wiki page D D3D Mini and the topic is is the D3D Mini basic 
the 3D printer design that we can do collaboratively. So we start with a part list. We define what part lists do we need to CAD up. And when people know how to use FreeCAD to do this, we can all, because it's we design that modularly, meaning that we know how the parts fit together. We just need to design the parts and make them correct. But the idea is that once we have all the parts, we can assemble them into a final assembly in FreeCAD. But it does take time to, to generate the parts and make sure that the right size, right properties, and the details on them are good. And that's how we can get a large crew of people to do that working collaboratively. Because it's like, it's not too hard because we, we have a lot of the prototype parts. Like we're just modifying existing parts or just using them as they are and resizing them or doing basic functions like aligning them and things like that. So, so let's get in this list, let's itemize that for the number, number of parts that we have. So, uh, part list. So I guess we start. Let's re renumber that to start at. How do we get to remember that? Renumber that. Ah, okay. It started on one there. That's good. Um, okay. So frame. So we have to know like the properties of the design. Frame is is 12 by 12 inches. A 12 by 12 by 12 so it's a cube so we have to end up with a 12 by 12 what is going on there okay 12 by 12 by 12 frame now we we want to start when we do a, a design we always want to start with with a concept design so you start with concept and requirements so concept is here we already get have a concept from the the last meeting um, the, the development the meeting that happened just Tuesday we actually started um, with a conceptual design for what the printer looks like just basics uh, based on a larger 3d printer that we do have the background work on the printer if you look at, so there's D3D mini PVC on the wiki, but it's building upon, uh, building upon D3, the, the last one, which is the, the best place to look at that is 3D printer manual. That's an extensive detailed guide for the whole 3D printer, which you'd have to uh, in there is everything that we know about the printer. So if we can build upon that or, or study that, then you'll be in a good position to how to design a current one. So that page, let me just put in a link there. It's simply called 3D Printer Manual. Uh, that's our greatest, latest publication. Just came out last month. And it's an exhaustive build guide, including like all the CAD files and everything else in FreeCAD. Uh, and STL files for 3D printing. So you got the 3D printer manual um, to go through a study. Okay, so the 12 by 12 by 12 inside volume, uh, outside, good question. That's gonna be the outside volume. And from the dev team, we've got a concept, I'll copy a couple of uh, slides from the dev team so from the dev team and I'll repaste that in here into this working document yeah I need faster internet here because my stuff is just we're working on right now actually the update is we're working on getting a parcel of land that's in town with a gigabit line and right now we're planning on getting a tower and beaming that over so we can finally solve all our internet issues so that's actually pretty exciting because we know we can get some land it's going to take some money probably like ten thousand bucks or something maybe twenty for land but i mean we absolutely need to do this because we're in a slow lane and we can't can't continue that so anyway uh page two look at the some of the concept here so that's a conceptual design of the 3d printer so it's a, it's a cubic frame you have to pay attention to orientation left right front and back we have one back z-axis and then uh two axes for the y 
like left Y and right Y, and then one X axis that goes back and forth. Think about it as if you're looking from the front, it's like an X, Y, Z coordinate system. And then you've got the bed holder, the bed, you got the extruder, but uh, that's essentially it. So based on that diagram, we can say, okay, what are all the parts? We got the frame. Um, so we can say that. Right, 1.1 1 .1 there. Size of frame is 12. Now the size of axis, I mean, that's the, that's the stuff to figure out. Um, let's talk about the axes. So, so frame, well, more details on a frame though. So do the corners. Um, so, so the part parts list for part library, one, you have the PVC tubes, which are a separate part. So let's do something like um, corners are part one. So let's just go start, you know, listing all the parts. Corners, then the tubes, which is part two. Now the third part is the hangers for the axes. So, so what do we call it? Axis mounts, uh, which are 3D printed. So axis mounts, that's going to be part three. Um, and then we go to the axes. So yeah, we're working on the axes there. Um, so yeah, let's let's list them as maybe point two here. So now working back, we got yeah, it's getting me to two there. No. Okay, I don't know how to format it there, but two is going to be the axes. Uh, we like to start with the y-axis because there's two of them and that's what you hang the the x-axis to. So so what do we know about the y-axis? Well, it has to fit, the requirement is it has to fit on the axis mounts. We'll talk about that. Now, axis um, x, so the x goes in between the two y-axis. Uh, so based on the frame plus the y-axis, you have to fit uh, fit the x-axis between the y-axis. That's how you build it when you build it in real life. So we're actually following the process of how you would build it. Um, now axis z, there's one, axis z, well axis y, just axis x is one of them. So it's axis, and then axis Z. Uh, there's one of them, unlike unlike the unlike the bigger printer. And that goes up and down on the back of the machine according to the convention on slide three. That's at the back of the the printer, and then the print bed holder. You can call it a print bed. Let's keep going with the numbers. Print bed holder. So on that, we're going to attach the, the print bed. Right? So print bed holder. Um, the 1 8 inch platform steel, that's what goes on a bed holder. And then... We've got extruder, which we, we're not going to worry about that yet because that's a, it's very modular. And we have to actually, so William was saying that we're going to open source uh, the ba very, very basic MK8 style, um, style 3D printed open source design. Now, typically before we took the extruder off the shelf, like, you know, like a $20 part, $30 part, uh, MK8. That's the from last year. This year we switched to actually a much more advanced extruder. But this we could do for a very basic one that still can be very robust. But we want to three print the parts for it and and do it at like it'll cost us like five or ten bucks to to build one of these extruders. It's uh, a very basic design that still works according to William. He's been printing for like a couple of years with with like not getting it clogged like except for like one or two times or something. 
So extremely good record even with that kind of a very simple uh, extruder. And it's true, like when you know what you're doing, you can you can make that work really well. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's I just covered the extruder there. Uh, now we want a power supply. I think seven amps. <clears throat> I think seven amps actually is sufficient based on what I made 3D does. Uh, wait, let's do. Let's see the numbering here. Okay, seven. Eight, seven amp power supply. So for that, I mean, once again, we got to draw that up as. I mean, it's just a box essentially with some cables, but we can draw it up as. It doesn't really go on the printer itself. It goes, you know, it's plugged into a wall, and then a plug goes into the three printer. Um, so what we probably want to do. I mean, we could either solder, like as a basic version, you can solder the power leads uh, to Arduino. And that's actually not a bad idea, simply because, like, if you use any ramps board off the shelf, I know we had problems before of uh, even the the power leads burning out. Uh, it didn't happen a lot because we don't have, like, we have an external bed MOSFET to run the heated bed, but here we don't have a heated bed. But even if you don't use the heated bed, the amount of power for the the extruder itself we've seen it actually burn out the connector on the ramps so what we've been doing right now is actually soldering the power leads to the arduino uh, so actually i would suggest just keeping that since that's uh, that's definitely going to save some people some pain uh, and it's just easy to solder uh, solder the leads so we'll probably like take the power supply strip the ends and, and solder them to the arduino now um what else we got? Uh, for the print surface, all we could do is use like the blue blue painters tape, which works. That works well. I mean, it, it does. It's um, we can do that for a very simple version. Um, <clears throat> what is this? The cube. Not sure what that's about there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what else we got? So. Arduino ramps. So nine would be Arduino ramps. Uh, search yes. Let's search for existing CAD. I know we've had some. Was it on our design? We we have that somewhere. So yeah, search for existing CAD probably. Right. I assume there's lots of CAD for those boards all over the internet in general, right? Yeah. I mean, they must have designs for that if yeah. you're just looking for a cat. Yeah. Um, That's it good. sounds like in general you're intending to change a bunch of parts for this. I wasn't expecting that many parts to be different. Uh, yeah. You, the other, but, yeah, change a uh, bunch of parts. I mean, the universal axis is absolutely the same, but, I mean, since the frame is different, I mean, and for the extruder, like, you know, if we put the, as an example, the E3D extruder costs $110. So it'll be like a significant addition. So we, we don't need to do that for a very basic 3D printer. Uh, that's so it's, you're targeting the goals to make the outside frame a certain size and then just adjust all the parts uh, yeah. inside to new lengths. Yeah. And, so, and the, well, actually, like the design specification for that is um, may essentially design require, the, like the number one design requirement is make it fit a six by six inch bed and from our experience if the frame is six inches bigger that f typically fits uh, a print bed six inches smaller so that's why i'm saying 12 because we want to the design requirement is run a uh, six inch print bed six inch by six inch print bed or 150 by 150 millimeter so uh we're we're saying 12 by 12 inch because that's what we know will fit that kind of a frame that kind of a bed so that's a good start now we can of course like modify the size of the frame just by modifying the the length of the tubes so if we find that it's not fitting we can extend them but it should fit and then the key part is this mount like the axis mounts right so axes 
there will be actually four mounts, right? Um, four, four parts there. Well, the, the number of them, like there's going to be four because we have the, no, actually six, because we've got the Y, Y, and Z. They're mounted to the frame and each, each axis requires two axis, two axis mounts. So let's talk about on page two, uh, the concept. So, so like the key is to design this, this mount, um, uh, mount axis mount design. How do you do it? So that we have to start from scratch because we've done no work upon that. But here it's important to understand the requirements for that so we can make a make a good design happen. So let's talk about all the requirements for that. Um, requirements. So first of all, we know <clears throat> that we're mounting the universal axis. And when I double bracket it, you can, uh, that means it's on the wiki under that page name. So you can fill in, please fill in the link. Um, and by the way, everyone is, let's see, the share permissions on this document are open. Anyone on the internet can find and edit, so you can contribute by putting links into this and other stuff. So mounting the universal axis, and just as a general idea, the the axis pieces are kind of like squares with four bolt holes they have four um if someone can abe if you can paste in an actual axis uh motor or any other piece that would help us uh, so the idea is during these meetings we can all collaborate by uh, putting in like pasting in things and and s providing supporting information but all I can tell you is that on the plastic printed pieces, we have a pattern, a square pattern of four holes, right? And that's what the bolts that connect to the frame, or you can connect other axis pieces to them through these four holes. That's a universal pattern we have on all the, all the printed pieces, right? So, okay, those are the actual complete axes, but take one of those, the middle piece, the edge piece, which is called the either piece and the, the motor mount piece. Uh, you have a whole pattern of four. So that's that's the what I drew here, like call it the front view. And the side view of this is it's a little different. It's it's a thin pancake, you know, it's like one inch thick about. Uh, from the side and what it has it has the bolt holes uh, corresponding to that so there's are the bolt holes if you see them from the side uh, so there's bolt holes like that and there's four of them in the side view you only see two yeah is it going to be necessary to edit the size of the the universal axis parts or are we just scaling the no. length of the rod down? no no not the universal axis parts because they're they're pretty highly engineered actually um yeah. don't worry about so, those those are good well-engineered parts and we can use them as they are we just worry about s scaling the size of the rods that's a good question um yeah yeah, so, yeah, yeah. just the, just the just the rods the volume the the print volume right and shorten for that yep exactly uh, we know that, but the critical idea is that we're adjusting them to the size of the frame, right? So, um, so let me shrink this up a little bit. So we're mounting the universal axis. Um, now, also, Abe, I don't know if you see the detail, but in, let me point out to one detail that in this picture here, that's the big carriage piece. We don't use those because we're just using a half piece there. The one that's only one inch long. This one is the, the longer one. Idler. Yeah, the short short idler piece. Uh, yeah, so we use short idler. On the original page. Um, I was looking for a power supply. It sounds like you want a smaller power supply for yeah, this. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, I'm not seeing a, um, I don't know, what, a seven or uh, maybe. Yeah, I just got to find one. The, the screw down type right um, well there's a little different 
there's different ones like what i was thinking like for the simplest route instead of using the metallic power supply like we typically use which you got to add a power cord to it get one that's like a, for a computer like the black one oh, that's got a plug already that's what's coming up but i figured yeah, yeah maybe it needed screw down things so you don't have to solder anything oh, no I, no because we're gonna as i said in the last page we're gonna rip off the uh, like unsolder the cord like cut the cord at the end and plug and actually solder it to the arduino because we know that the arduino power plug is like for the clones sometimes it even that even burns out so uh, we want to prevent okay. that mm -hmm. so power supply for all the parts or just for the arduino everything the everything a, it plugs it in yeah, the it's it's not actually the Arduino that you plug the. I'm sorry, I, I'm saying it wrong. It's not the Arduino that we're plugging. Hold on a second. Um, the Arduino has a. I'm sorry. So to be accurate, it's the ramps that we're soldering to because ramps has got all the components on it. So the power to the uh to the heaters goes through the ramps right so, so we're actually soldering it to the ramps not the arduino I'm, my bad you could go to the ramps and then the ramps uh power from there might go to the arduino that's correct you um, literally clip the off of the power supply and wire the power supply directly to the ramps and then take that cord i don't know solder it to the ramps elsewhere and then plug it into the Arduino. Yeah, actually you don't even need to plug it in because when the ramps board is on top of the Arduino, that provides the power. Yeah, okay. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. It That's feeds sufficient without. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cuz cuz basically what you have is the <clears throat> is the Arduino board and on top of it sits the ramps controller board, but you're making all the connections to the ramps controller board and the Arduino gets its power from the controller board yeah because it's sitting below it the high current for the motors comes from the ramps so yeah that's oh. correct yeah. yeah um so seven seven amps is enough for that are, see are there different size motors for this as well is that the other the steppers are going to be smaller or no no uh, we've got the steppers that we have we can in order to not like have another like more unique parts just use the ones we already use now there's a reason for that so we should actually uh, i want to mention that uh i think we can also print the linear bearings because you can very well print them out of pla or some and or you there's actually tribological 3d printing filament filament that's like self-lubricating or very low friction we can actually print those now if using plastic bearings they are going to be a little uh, more sticky than the ball bearing bearings so actually using the same size motors that we use normally they're pretty strong so we're not going to have any problem moving that and that's the reason why we want to also use the same motors so we have enough power if we print our own bearings because I, I, I'm actually proposing that we do print our own bearings for this initial version because we know that works. So uh, part of the design for using the larger motors is so we have no problem moving the printed bearings. So this part of the way we get this so low cost is we're like printing a lot of the parts. So we're printing up to the bearings right now. Now eventually we might even print our own belt and sprockets, but that's a little harder. That that's rubber and it and that has to be pretty precise. So we'll save that for later for now we do 3d printed frame as well as the linear bearings now on the linear bearings that's a significant cost savings already uh, each linear bearing the plastic ones we actually use the professional pr plastic bearings which are very low noise and you can run them fast unlike the ball bearings which if you run really really fast you can end up scratching your rods so we're using the plastic ones the plastic uh, cost a dollar 25 each but there's a lot of them there's um in the in the original machine we use five axes so it's five times four so it's 20 of them so just in the bearings we're using uh, like 25 dollars worth of bearings so that goes down to like 25 cents when we print print them ourselves 
so that's pretty good. Um, okay, so let's talk about the axis mount design. Um, the critical requirement there is so uh, basically we've got okay let me copy and paste the frame so the frame um, from the other document looks like this now the cool thing about this frame as we said this is Ruslan's work we have a workbench the 3d printer workbench and FreeCAD where we can generate frames like these automatically so all we need to do is do the download the the 3d printer workbench uh, So we can say use the 3D printer workbench on the wiki. So uh, there's instructions there for how you can generate some of the some of these frames in FreeCAD. So let me actually uh, 3D printer workbench. Well, look at that. It's called D3D Workbench or 3D Printer Workbench, but we have full instructions of how you uh, install this workbench into FreeCAD. That's a valiant effort by Ruslan from the development team. That's great work. Um, we've got that for ready use, which saves us a lot of time because now when we want to generate a frame, to generate any frame, it takes five seconds instead of like whatever, 20 minutes or an hour or two hours if we're starting from scratch. So, um, there we are. So on the frame, what we have to do is like, okay, one way you can do is obviously you can drill holes through the frame, right? I mean, not a problem. But I'd like to make this more of a construction set thing because to, to drill a hole precisely is actually pretty tricky. And then you have to get the bolt length through that frame like exactly right or otherwise the bolts won't fit. So what we can do is design a a, a f axis mount which is just a 3d printed part that snaps onto the tubes and that way we can readily attach anything to the to the frame like you can make crazy machines multiple axes and it's not that you know it's a whole big process to do that you can readily do that like totally like Legos and that's the reason that's why we really like uh, modular design like that so I'm gonna uh, duplicate the slide I'm gonna go to the uh, more details on how do you do the, the axis mount. Because once we get that, uh, and that's going to take some prototyping. So we're going to have to print this axis mount to make sure it works like, like it does. So actually, the, you know, people at London International Academy, our students, I can definitely get involved with that. It looks like we're just two of ourselves. They, they left us, but we're recording this. So... Um, okay, so on the frame we've got. Let's let's take just one of the sides. Okay, so we're gonna take, you know, take one side. So you're mounting like either the ax, the motor, or idler piece. So so on the <clears throat> on the tubing. So you're talking about three quarter inch tubing. So by the way, it's uh, the requirement is uh, three-quarter inch tubing because that's that's a good size, a good workable size. So three-quarter inch PVC, and uh, not sure where we have that. Is that within the piping workbench? I don't even think we have plain PVC in the workbench. I think we just got the fittings for it. So three-quarter inch PVC. Um, is used so that's another part in the part library okay so let's discuss the mount so so how do we design the mount for that so what we would like is that if you take the from the side view you take say the you know the motor piece this could be the side view of either the motor or idler or even the the carriage piece if you take the side view like that uh, how do you mount that to the frame well Let's draw a frame piece. So the frame is going to be, I'm going to draw this as the frame. So that's going to be my frame. It's going to be about the same thickness as, as this, uh, as the carriage piece. 
So that's a three quarter inch PVC. Okay, well, so we want to put something that that you can readily detach from the, the frame. So let's talk about some of the more specific requirements here. Now let's get that as numbers. Requirement one is that it's readily detachable from frame. Uh, but in order to get a nice tight fit, I mean, I would recommend using the bolts, using the bolts that we already use. Now, which bolts do we already use? We use 18 millimeter. We use 25 millimeter. No, not eight, not 25, 30, 30 millimeter. Those are the two ones we use. So these are six millimeter by 18 or 30. Uh, so let's use, if you know, like we can, because we're designing, we can choose to design out of parts that we already have, so we don't have to add any extra parts to the 3D printer ecology, part ecology. So, because remember, we're always talking about uh, part ecology so that we can create construction sets, which means the less parts you have, the more effective you are in building a lot of different things. The less ideas, less parts, more versatility without compromising any performance. So. Um, so six millimeter by M, let's use, let's choose to use one of those. So you can paste one of those in. Um, and you can see what they are from the D3D BOM uh, on a wiki. You'll, you'll see in our parts list, you get the six millimeter by 18 millimeter bolts to see exactly what they look like. And we have the CAD for that already. Uh, we can put that into the part library. So, so how do you do that? Um, I don't know. We're going to have to design it. But what else has to happen? You want to be able to bolt in, bolt the axis piece to the axis mount just as if it were the frame, the, the metal frame. And why? So that we're not needing any additional parts. Like, because the bolts that we use already, they basically put uh, the bolt through the the pr printed plastic pieces, and they go through the frame. So, point is, as if it were the frame. Okay. Well, in other words, like, I mean, I'm not. I don't really mean as if it were the frame. I, what I really mean more specifically is using the same bolts that we already have, which is, right now we use the 30 millimeter bolts for that. Okay, so so next, what, what else are the requirements? It would be, like, you can, it's such that you can take existing axes so take the d3d for uh, 14 inch frame metal right so that's from the 14 inch frame 8 by 8 inch bed d3d the standard version so you can take those axes but of course they have to be shrunk because you know this frame is smaller but take them exactly as they are with the bolts how the bolts are on that and take those exact ones and mount them onto this frame. So imagine you had the PVC frame that's 14 inches, just like the 14 inch metal frame, you would be able to take the exact axis and mount this on the PVC. So, and then you might ask, well, why is that important? Well, that means that we have a universal uh, system here, which the same actual axis fits on either the PVC frame or the metal frame, depending on what has one has access to. Because I can tell you right now, if you 3D print the frame, you can 3D print the entire frame that we're talking about here. It'll take you, I mean, it'll take you time, but the cost will be minimal. I mean, especially if you're using recycled plastic, like we're, we've got the filament maker right now, that we can make recycled plastic, um, plastic printing filament. 
it'll be ridiculously low cost as opposed to like fifty dollars for the metal frame because right now our metal frames are costing fifty dollars now you can also get the pvc corners from the store right you can They'll, those exist but we can 3d print them just as well so let's do that now if you get them off of the shelf they'll be like twenty dollars for the printed pieces for the corners like it's about fifteen I think fifteen twenty dollars so once again you're saving all that money because it's going to be less than a dollar in printing filament to make the frame. So about a dollar, you know, maybe two dollars. Um, okay. And mount them. In other words, like we have one bolt attaching right now the the frame to the uh, the axis to the frames. One bolt on the, each end of the axis, so two bolts per axis. So um, that's how it is. What are what are other requirements that we can think about this for for here? Um, you can slide. So so the design of the attachment is you can slide the attachment up or down on the PVC to adjust height. Okay, so the point is like we don't uh, need to know where the axis attaches to the PVC. We can adjust it as we need to. Now, if you were drilling that, you'd have to get the the height of the hole exactly right. So the height combined with the fact that it's like it's actually not super easy to drill through PVC if you want to get it like a perfectly centered hole because you're drilling at the top and a drill bit tends to drift. So you'd have to either like uh, use a hole punch, a punch element to pre put a little divot to start your drill bit and you have to have the exact location, right? So if you eliminate those requirements then you're just so much easier in terms of printing and therefore giving more people access to do this more easily. It's a, there's a big advantage to having this attachment axis yeah, mount piece. It would just be a clamshell yeah. piece that goes the bolts are on the side so you don't have to drill the could be. that's what you're saying right it could yeah 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 something like that and you said you said a clamshell piece yeah that's one way to go it could also be like a clamp like piece that would be yeah. bolted so yeah some some kind of a clamp or clam around the three quarter inch yeah uh, pvc um think about that i guess where the axes go yeah because i've it sounds like it, definitely expecting it to be smaller of a print volume than the 8x8. Eight eight. Um, I think how the axes can be positioned relative to the frame because there's different ways to. Yeah, yeah. okay, existing, okay. Uh, axes parts have bolt holes on the ends. Um, well, that, yeah, okay, let me, let me address that point, Abe, yeah. because I think what you're referring to is that. You can mount the axis in many different ways on the frames. You can mount, uh, and we've done it before when we did the PVC, we mounted the axes through the end nut catcher hole. So if you look at the detail of the motor piece and the idler piece, they have nut catchers on their ends, right? So actually, let's let's make that explicit because how we mount this is going to be... Yep. You could have this other clamshell camp clamp be similar and have magnets of the magnet I think, together but that seems um you can i, I don't know is that desirable I you mean, can but you have a bunch of right uh, right um and then there's room for air there but right putting it there. yeah so i'm gonna actually actually talk a little bit details details of uh axis mounting uh, or the 3D printed pieces, more like 3D printed piece piece connection. So the point about that is that you can mount the the 3D printed pieces in in several ways, and they're designed to be flexible like that. And we need to understand that because that will determine how we actually design this PVC clamp thing. Because we actually have the option of using either the through holes or the nut catcher holes. So the point is there are two main ways to make attachments 
to the 3D printed pieces. Okay, so so let me get the numbering off of this. So that's that's the big point, and they are through holes. And they are the end nutcatcher holes. So can you paste the pictures from the universal axis pic picture that reflects this? Yeah, I'm kind of working on some files uh, for this. It's a little more complicated than I thought, but it's, yeah, it's kind of what I thought, but um, I don't, we're just gonna have to make some new files that fit the existing. CAD measurements. So I think the main thing is getting measurements, it sounds like, and kind of positioning some of the parts relative to the PVC frame. And, um, yeah. It's yeah. a measurement. We know how to make the size of the, the new parts. It's yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, um, yeah, let me um, actually cut and paste this thing. So I'm looking at, if you're looking at my screen, this is on a universal axis page and actually let's look at the motor um, well actually the idler piece here so this is webgl also actually we could probably get it from the a more it takes a little bit for the webgl to load up there that's the only thing okay um, but i'll just copy and paste this for now but if you look at the the idler piece here and this is actually the long idler so you, you shouldn't really be looking at this one but the short one is similar um, but the point remains that in the in the plastic printed pieces you you clearly see the through holes right so you take you know all these four these bolts that those bolts as well as these other bolts here as you see they're obviously going through through holes okay so that's the through hole aspect now we also have the nut catcher hole so let me actually make this text bigger so we can emphasize this um oh, not maybe not that big you suggesting that option is to have longer bolts that go through uh a third part a new part to clamp onto the pvc no uh, I'm, I'm not i'm i'm just outlining the options that do exist so the through holes you can use are 18 or 30 millimeter bolts we have those options now the 18 millimeter bolts there they reach just to clamp the two pieces together so you have to use the 30 millimeter bolts so maybe i, I can point that out um so the, the longer bolts that are shown here are 30 millimeter okay because the shorter ones they just clamp the universal axis pieces together they don't reach any further so you can't attach that to anything so so i'll put yeah it seems like the best way is to have a totally separate two-piece part that clamps on the pvc and then attaches yeah. to the in ones right so. yeah and we also want to make it like as lightweight and elegant so like when, the first thing when i hear when you when you talk about a clamp like a clamshell Let's see if we can do something that's like, well, just the requirement is just make it as elegant as possible. So it's not this big bulky thing that looks ridiculous. Uh, so we have to, that, that's where the design comes in. So these are 18 millimeter, uh, but I'm going to say. It sounds like fairly large to go around the PVC, but. It does. Really just need to get bolts on the, um, on the, on the sides and then, yeah, something either the bolt holes themselves attached to other parts so okay so I I my proposition is and this is actually do not use these why because if you mount the frame pieces the the printed pieces uh, like that you're reducing the print volume significantly because uh, otherwise you can mount the like the when you fit so that means you're you're using them to fit in between the the 
PVC pieces, that means that the axis is going to be shorter. Because just like on the current D3D, you see that the the ax axes are sticking beyond the frame slightly. Yeah. So you're able to use a smaller frame to handle a bigger print volume, which is important because that means your machine is going to be smaller. You know, uh, you're just not taking up that much room. You get more print area for the same frame, which, you know, it's not super important when you're printing your own PVC or your ABS or PLA, whatever frame, but it's still, it's, you, you're going to definitely save a lot of print time and you just better resource efficiency if you mount these more effectively. So, um, it should be able to be designed so that the, the movement space of so the rods, uh, maximizes the volume to the ed inside edge of the PVC. Exactly. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, they can't go free on the inside of the PVC, obviously, but the, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, that's right. So I want to emphasize point number six, mounts on the outside of the frame. Why? Once again, because it allows you to use a smaller frame for more print volume. There's another second big advantage, which is actually bigger than that. So let me. So it allows a smaller frame for same print volume. Now, but there's a more important point, and that is allows you to use all identical rod size. So if you look at the frame and the way it works, if you look at D3D uh, carefully at the the 3D printer manual, you will notice that all the rods are identical in length. That's because the way the geometry works, if you mounted them on the inside of the frame, then the x-axis rods would have to be shorter because you're closing in the space. If you mount them on the outside, you're able to use the identical rod, rod length as for the, the y-axis. So at that point, the y-axis and the, the x-axis rods are the same. And that also applies to the z-axis when you when you mount it, as I said, on the outside, then the z-axis rod lengths are also the same. Now you might think, okay, what's the big deal? We just cut the rods to different size. Well, it is a big deal because uh, if you're doing an extreme build where you got a lot of people building stuff, it just simplifies things immensely. You don't have to keep track of, oh, do I got my two x rods? my Y rods, my Z rods, there's, it's just tremendously simpler and we found that on ourselves and that's why we can build our printer right now in five hours. So um, that's the big deal. Uh, there's a lot of these details of how you build it that make it either extreme manufacturable or you're just like anyone else and it takes you days or weeks to build anything. So that's the difference. Uh, so this point 6B is a very important one for why you want to mount to the outside of the frame. Now you might say, oh, okay, well, if that's the case, if I, I can also use all the same rods if I just change the frame size. Well, once again, then you're complicating the frame size. Then you have to pay attention to like which, what side lengths, they're going to be like three different lengths. And that's just much more common. You're, just, you're, you're reducing the part count there. So, so instead of having three rods sizes, you got one rod size. So that's like one unique part count instead of three unique part counts. And then if you were to modify the frame, then you would have three unique parts sizes for the frame if you didn't follow this procedure of mounting to the outside. So uh, the idea is to, to really save and make it super efficient for the build. Uh, next item would be... Um, Alex, welcome. Um, <laughs> Hey there, quick note. I, I just wanted to pop in and say I'm going to be late for the oh, okay. building, so you can go over time, Okay. basically. Okay. What to. time What time do we need to, to start at? Like, what uh, What time do you need, guys? I think um, two hours from now. Okay. So, an hour later. Okay. Sounds good. All right, okay. cool. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, appreciating everybody here for doing this design jam thing. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you later. Yep. Bye bye. Um, okay. So on the yeah, nut catcher holes. 
um, all identical Rodland. So that's a big point. I, I think um, altogether simplify to uh, by all the details that you consider in the actual design you can simplify things greatly so there's many different ways to build a printer we're just really trying to focus on okay what's the absolute simplest that we can do in order to make it work okay so so further details um and what do i mean by mounting on the outside of the frame it's like what you see in this picture here, like uh, on slide number five. So if you have the right or left y-axis, you see that it's stick. Like if you see the, you know, this green box as the frame itself, the left axis is actually outside. It's not within the boundary of the frame. It's outside of it. And the z-axis, if you were to t turn this. Uh, sideways it's also outside now so so actually don't look at this picture this is 2016 this this orientation picture that's actually 2016 and that's where we had the axes inside therefore the frame that we needed would have to be larger uh, to do that in other words like we could fit the 8 by 8 inch bed in the 16 inch frame now we can fit it in a 14 inch frame which if you're using metal I mean that's significantly smaller um, and lighter so outside the the y axes are mounted on the out, outside and the z axes are mounted on the outside as well to take advantage of the build volume um, okay next requirement not using nut catcher holes for the reason here that if you mount this in between the the vertical frame members then you just need a longer frame and you, once again you would not be able to do the trick where all the rod lengths are the same um, uh, so the for the same reason so here it's for the same reason as point number six as mounting axes on outside of frame same 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 reason um, what else so yeah um, I mean I think that we might get into some more requirements as we go here but but with that said what does that mean for the uh, for the design so let's let's actually start drawing out what this could look like and then we can like once I feel we're on the same page here we should uh, start the actual design so how are you gonna mount this um, um, so it's something that so it's an intermediate piece that it's it's like an you can call it like a wrapper or an interface piece between two things that you're bonding together so it's really like a like an interface so how would, would that look in practice well let's start drawing out the possibilities here so uh, so so it'll be next to the somehow it will be like over the bolt hole so you can bolt it in because we said we were gonna bolt it in on one side but it probably can be like this like well let's put them closer together so that it's not so awkward here um, it can look like something like this so so one I'm gonna put another requirement it's sufficient to be mounted with one bolt hole with one bolt hole um, so here we have a choice like we can use the two bolt holes from the the axis piece so maybe I, I should label this this is a side view of ax axis 3d printed piece Okay, and this this obviously here is the three quarter inch PVC. This is the frame member that you're attaching to. Okay, 
okay? So what do we do? So so we, we said one, one hole is enough, so you don't really need to span across this hole, but when you attach it, it has to lay flat against it, so maybe like we do have to make it this big, like, like this tall, because you have to have enough surface area that you can get a nice flat, so it doesn't like wobble, like, like go non-vertical. If it were like just a thin point attachment, like I can see here, yeah, it might tend to wobble, but also at the same time, the y-axes are connected to one another, so you can probably get away with that because uh, if this is the, the y-axis, it's connected to the y-axis on the other side through the x-axis, so that would keep it still vertical. So some that would be minimum would be just spanning the one hole, and then like say it's some kind of a clamp, and then say you have, you know, maybe a bolt hole, so it's a clamp and it with a bolt hole here, something like that. Um, you know that could that could work. You know some clamp, and then here, of course, you would have to have uh, something where you screw this into. Now, how about using a nut catcher inside this piece? That would be one way to solve that. What if we put so maybe like extend it just to show that a little more detail. But what if we just did this this interface piece as? So I'm going to zoom in on it. Zoom in on that piece here. And what if we just put, so I'm going to use the polyline tool, so we're going to put a hole in there, right, and put a nut catcher inside there, so we put in a 6 millimeter nut, and then we use our standard 30 millimeter bolt to, to screw in from this side, right? That would be one option, so that's I mean that's definitely doable, and there's different ideas we can do here. But that's you know I would propose something like that. You have, however you have the interface piece work, you can now put in one of the regular bolt. Well, that this bolt would have to be a little longer here, right? Let's lengthen this bolt here to reflect this going into the actual nut catcher. I'm just doing conceptual work here. But something like that, you have a bolt here and it goes into the nut catcher, the 30 millimeter bolt. Okay, and that would do it. So now, <laughs> do we have enough info to make this thing work? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we start with a design process. So from the top, let, let's just discuss what this looks like from the top so that people are kind of like on the same page here. But I mean, it's just a concept, right? It's a, it's a concept I'm just proposing some that would work and, you know, I could kind of see this coming together but let's let's discuss more because if we actually draw the you know in CAD you can actually start seeing things in 3D so you see how things actually work but so this is like the front view well or side view however you want to call it I'm yep. getting ready to go but I'm listening yep. Um, yep. It sounds like on that part yeah the 3D is going to be complicated because if the mounting part that's going to be created uh, needs bolts on either side to clamp down on the PVC. Then there's got to be some bulkier part that hangs down below, I guess. Well, it, yeah, yeah, you definitely need a 3D because there's going to be like multiple. There's going to be bolts going through it at two on two axes. Right, uh, right. Orthogonal. Yep. Um, so it, it's probably going to make it bigger. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. That's right. So. So you have to like, okay, if this is a clamp, then it would have the three quarter inch hole for the PVC. And it would have to be like, yeah, if it's a clamp, okay, like the simplest design of a clamp I could see here would be something that looks like, um, let's take a look at that. So top view would be, and I'm gonna draw that out like this. So something like this, this, um actually like this and then it kind of follows if it's a clamp it would follow this the circle the circle like that and then here and like that okay so now i get rid of the the pvc hole and that so that's how the clamp would look. 
and then you can possibly put like a bolt through here so that would be like the simplest conceptual design of what i can think of like off the top of my head what this clamp would be now would this work we have to prototype it so that would be here would be the bolt hole for your 30 millimeter bolt but right there i don't know if a 30 millimeter bolt is going to fit through that so maybe we have to put clamp you know put these closer to each other but that's the first sign so if the, you take the requirement of using just a 30 millimeter bolt uh this would have to be shorter than 30 millimeters which is like one and a half one and a quarter inch and may not fit you have to maybe like make this smaller you know so, so yeah you're getting into design issues probably that would have to be yeah we have to uh, probably the good idea good process to follow would be take your 30 millimeter bolt take your nut catcher and build and then take your hole for the pvc and work around that and see how you can make those fit together so that's one idea now you can put like a double clam here with a nut catcher like this could be actually split into two could be just a plain clamp um yeah so so that's the design so from here on we can start with the actual technical design of the clamp um, but that's you know without actually sitting down to do it this uh we can't do any more than that um How's it sound, Abe? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought was some type of clamshell. I think you have to bolt, obviously, you have to have two pieces you bolt on either side to tension it. I mean, if you have, you know, an axis, you have to bolt it on each end, and so it's not going to um, rotate on the PVC or anything, but you still right. have to clamp it. So well, that's great. So. And yeah. Then, yeah. I mean, it, I think it has to be two pieces. And you, you, just like the other ones, the clamps where you've got nut catchers, yeah. and you just put half on each side, you just split it in half. Yeah, um, yeah. And then if you have, if you don't have a clam, um, if you have two piece, I mean, that's two pieces you got to print and probably one more bolt that you have to use. So we want to find out something that does work and that's the simplest design. So, I mean, the requirement, of course, is at any time, which are unspoken here, is that, yeah, make it the most optimal, simple, lowest part count design. I mean, well, I'll make the low, lowest part count yeah. design. Yeah, it, there's different things possibly to mount to the PVC that mm, might require different configurations. So uh, to have more unique parts um so but at least maybe in the cad files there could be a base clamp part and yeah. then if you have to modify it to hook yeah. other things onto the pc from there that would make it more modular at least I mean, yeah um there's probably other things besides the access that you might want to mount on the pvc eventually like holders for the yeah um, yeah i mean there might already be some kind of a pvc clamp holder if you we look on thingiverse or whatever so we can maybe do that as well but yeah that's the general idea mm -hmm. yeah so if you guys yeah so i think that's we i mean we didn't get any turn up for this this uh design sprint really so i'm not sure we, we need to go further here because that this, the design problem has been laid out um but that's where i actually think that the the university chapters or not the chapters but the clubs uh with the mentors for them i think we can get a lot work done when there's a bunch of people that we can get you know like a ton of people on that right now and each person can work on one part like one person can be designing the clamp or you know many people can be designed in the clamp and then uploading their products as soon as they have them and then people can keep modifying them i think there's a there's a big chance for pretty rapid design like that. but right now we just don't have the people right now in this meeting to make it work and probably the limit is that a lot of people don't know the technique for the collaborative literacy and, and CAD so so there's a limit to what we can do so we need to keep building the team there was a some issues with the big CAD work but um, I, I'm looking for the uh, CAD I think you said the 14 inch version yeah uh, CAD was a good starting point for that so yeah i'm looking for the link to that specifically. yeah well we actually uh, don't we have the on b3d part library page uh there's uh like i think the 16 inch version of the d3d there we never drew up the 14 inch version i don't believe we completed that so 
but we have like pretty complete on a 16 inch but i don't think we've got a complete on uh on the smaller ones okay so, so that's actually part of it we need to do that it needs to be cut down from the 16 inch yeah. uh, parts then then okay yeah. so the biggest part of is to put yeah some of the, the just all the inside parts the but okay into the, yeah the but actually what i in the measurements i would suggest not even working from the the d3d uh printer i would suggest working from the d3d cnc circuit mill because in that we have that's the only design that we have which has the simplified parts because the the 16 inch cad has the non-simplified parts meaning they're that file is going to get really bulky really quick so for the d3d yeah. cnc circuit mill we actually use the simplified cad files so we can manipulate things more easily and it will be pretty immediate because uh that's still like i think under a megabyte for the overall file Whereas if we use the full detail files, it'll be 20, 30, 40 megabytes, which gets really slow down in FreeCAD. So yeah, I would suggest really using the simple parts. Simple CAD parts to access which of those to get measurements because there's a lot of measurements. As well. Oh, yeah. All that size. Yeah. But, but for that, yeah, for that, just use the uh, D3D part library parts because those are the individual parts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I guess... To kind of start from the inside size of the frame as well, just mm -hmm. measure uh, from that and then, yeah, cut. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we do have the data point that essentially when you build a frame, you can fit a bed that's six inches smaller. So we know that the 12 inches is going to be good, and we know that we got to design the mount piece and fit the axis size to that. So the axis size is going to be determined after you design the, um, well, no, it's going to be, we know that the axis size, well, actually there's details like which bolt hole you go through the axis, but um, once you know that you use the 12 inch axis, the, sorry, 12 inch frame, you can know the exact length of the rods and all of that for the, um, for the axis. And that's going to be 12 inch uh, because the, inside distance for the x-axis is 12 inch so the rods i can tell you right now they're going to be 12 inches but the actual axis itself is going to be a little bit longer because of the way it's mounted like the way it clamps over the rods it's going to actually be a little longer because it sticks out over the edges of the um over the edges of the frame so the axis itself is going to be like for the y's it's going to be about 13 inches long whereas the rods inside of it are going to be 12 inches and then the x-axis is going to be exactly 12 inches and the, the rods in there will be 12 inches. So there's details like that, but we know that already actually from the, the former builds. So that's, that's what we know so far. Yeah, it's actually, there's a logic to it. And that is um, essentially, if you know the frame, you can analyze when you see how the thing is built, you can analyze to see how all the parts Come together but for that you have to have an insight of how the build goes together and i think the best idea for how the build goes together is in the final assembly instructions of the 3d printer manual if you look at that chapter you will see the step-by-step -step of final assembly and that will inform how you would uh, like i do believe it's useful and that's actually how we try to work we try to design things in an intuitive way, which is how you would actually build that. Because when you, f when, when in your CAD design procedure, you follow the build order, then you have a, somewhat of a check, like a quality control check on how you're gonna be designing the machine. So it actually gives you information back to that. So what I would suggest is that you actually study the assembly instructions of the final machine for you to be more adept at designing the the parts that go together so that's actually a good suggestion for how to start the design process because because if you think about the build then doing the cad work will be self-reinforcing with the actual build so you're gonna have a better chance of getting the cad correct and also the final build procedure correct because so sometimes you run into the problem that if you're not the builder you uh you design whatever you feel like designing without consideration of how it's going to be built 
and then you end up uh, designing things that are really complex to build. So that's why I would suggest going through the final build procedure to get a better insight on how to design this. Uh, and a lot of the questions would be answered as far as the actual design. So I think yeah, that's... I think getting some, some links and measurements and everything uh, for CAD and stuff, and then maybe having another design sprint uh, we can you know kind of divide up some of the CAD work. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, so uh, on the actual, what we can do at this point is if we take the, you know, if we go to the overall, the first page of the document where we start listing the parts, the only thing we can do there is take people and sign up for one of the parts. So, um, frame. So we can say part one, frame, frame is the entire thing, part, let's call that part two, part one is the actual assembly, part two is the corners, part three is the t tubes, axis mounts are part four, so I'm listing the library, part library parts, y axis. Yeah, part I added a couple, well I added the corner five, or a link. Corner CAD piece, and I uh, just put a placeholder file for the power supply, and that, that's about as far as I got to work. Mm -hmm. Right, and then so let's just make them explicit. So, so part six would be right y axis. Uh, so you have to be that explicit because because they're not the same; they're actually mirror images. Um, the PVC frame, I didn't, I don't know how much point there is in, I mean, we want to upload, I figured I uploaded the corner and things like that, and mm -hmm. put parts, links to the, to the individual, there's only two unique parts, it's a piece of PVC pipe and a corner. Uh, right, but, but I, I think so in, we in need a, to really assemble that because it's already generated for us to whatever size we want. Right, but remember, micro. remember that we also have to get the SDL files for printing, right? So you have to uh, separate yeah. those and put well, there's, them into a radical yeah. breakdown down to the single part. It's a lot of yeah. detail, but that's necessary for the entire process. That's why I'm saying we need tons of people to do this because there's so many parts. And each part needs to be you know, worked out and documented and so forth. Yeah, for the frame, the, the, there's only two unique parts. It's just the corners. I don't know how well those print. Those are complicated to print right so the pipe is just you know it's a pipe but the corners um you, you have to do like some kind of infill or support for that right i mean those, you can those here's what i would suggest i would suggest printing on the round part of the corner so all the things are kind of going off into the air but it's supported on a corner and gotcha. that way you can print it without support but we might want to design like a small, well, we could just print that with raft and that will work. So, yeah, but, but if you print it like, yeah, what you just said is right. If you lay it flat, then the overhangs will be there. But if you lay it, as I said just now, there won't be any overhangs and the angles will be about, I think, 45. So it should be printable. Um, it's 45. Yeah, it's maybe less, a little less than 45, but with a good printer, like if you have a cooling fan, that will work with those kinds of overhangs. That will work. It's like, yeah, it's going to be at some instead of being uh, with the uh, fitting points uh, uh, ninety degrees, they'll be like at forty-five to the print table. Is that what you're saying? So it needs to be modified with like a flat point on the bottom so that it can be printed that way. Yeah, you don't really need it because you can just if you use a raft, meaning like the uh, if you print it on like you can make the edge like around the bottom of that so it's something you scrape off later but yeah you could you could either like flatten the corner or use a uh, brim around it skirt it's called skirt i think yes yeah, skirt yeah mm -hmm. yeah i've heard of that uh yep hmm. yeah so if it's yeah and it shouldn't need support 
Right. Because um, in the grid cab, those corners, they're, they're round, you know. Like right, the right. And all. Yeah. I think just don't worry about that for now. That's, you know, we're getting into details. Okay. Um, I think with this skirt, it's, it's printable. So, I'm trying to think of other questions before I go. Um, it's just a matter of getting a lot of measurements and uh, the yeah the basic files uh, started. So the thing I would look for is the the CAD for the circuit mill, which you suggested was a good, a better starting point. It's, yeah, it's under D3D CNC circuit mill. And that D3D mini is that the one that you're saying is missing some CAD for that? Is that uh, the CAD on that? Uh, that was the metal frame one, so we're right now we're talking about PVC, so that's a different one. But yeah, I don't think the CAD on that was super complete either. It's okay. it's like maybe 80%. Yep. Yeah. So now we've identified 13 parts, so 13 people could do them, at least 13 parts. I don't see a um, CAD link. I see images, and there's no link uh, uh, on that many page, so... Oh, no, don't use D3D Mini. Um, use the D3D CNC circuit mill. Oh, there is no CAD file there. So, uh, okay, so that would be Manalis log. He was working on a mini. So if the CAD is not there, we should add it in. Wait, it's, is it not there? D3D Mini. It's just a presentation. Oh, okay, yeah. OSC part library. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, yeah, that's going to be on on Emmanuel's log. So, so yeah, if you can uh, paste that in here, that would be good. Yeah, we, we would want a development spreadsheet there so we can keep track of all those. Okay. Um, so right now we've got 13 parts that we identified, so the part library that we can start. So um, new slide, so the instructions... For this, are take one of the three D, <clears throat> one of the on page two. And CAD them, add them to the to a part library and generate SDL files if needed. So that's that's where we are right now. So let's see how far we can get on, on this step. And after that, I mean, there's 13 see, parts and then like 14th, 14th are there, CAD is the entire assembly. Okay, so the 13 parts, th those are mostly finished. Uh, parts that are from other stuff. The only modification, it sounds like, is just to cut the rods down to size and then, you know, assemble them and uh, right. basically they cut to the size of the inside PVC right. uh, distant and then uh, we could design the, the new uh, mounting parts from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our well, I mean, are there not specifically files like, generated already for for all those uh, no. printed parts, right? Well, yeah, for those, yes, but but um, okay. not for the frame or the frame mount and extruder parts. So, I was, uh, so William was going to work on the, his team was going to work on the extruder parts because they've got uh, a model of that printer that we're going to take measurements off that simple extruder so so
so the only thing you need to know also is to assume that the axis mount holes are lined up with midpoint of PVC, right? The, does that make sense? So when you when we put the so in uh, slide number six, um, if you look at where the nut catcher is, that will be like right down the middle of the PVC. So that means the distance between the nut catcher of one holder and the holder, the next holder on, on a frame that's 12 inches will be 11 inch, about 11 inches because the PVC is about an inch across. So the space between the nut catchers is going to be about 11 inches in a 12 inch frame. So you know that the mounting locations for when you build the axes are about 11 inches. But we don't know the absolute exact value until we measure that off the CAD with, with the axis mounts on it. So that's the general consideration. Okay, it sounds like there's uh at least let's see there's two two unique parts to print for the frame mm -hmm. and then there's probably two unique parts for the the new uh mount piece it, at least oh well, not at least i mean ideally it would be one piece but yeah yeah well i mean for the, the if it's a clamshell i well looking at that design there you have for the axis mount um is one piece I I don't know how to get it. I mean, how is that suggesting that well, that piece okay, so would be flexible? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it can be flexible. Yeah, sure. It could be a little hmm. slightly flexible. Okay, so it it could um, you could snap it around yeah, yeah. the PVC. You can snap it in. That would be the ideal just thing. One, one bolt. Okay. Yeah. The tolerance on that are going to be require some testing. <laughs> yes, yes. The, right? That's the that's exactly right. In order to get this to optimize this clamp piece, you're not going to get away without testing. You're going to have to figure out exactly, is it like 100% infill, um, you know, how, just the details of that, that's called rapid prototyping. That's when you take your 3D printer, you print the actual part and see if it works. Yeah, so that's, you know, we need collaboration on that with whoever's got 3D printers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with the 3D printers since I don't have one yet, Right. unfortunately. Um, I don't know. The flexibility and yeah strength of um right that. so yeah right. um so it sounds like you can benefit from this mini printer that that maybe you can shell out 200 bucks for just for the parts yeah 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 you got the yeah the flexibility on that then mm -hmm. yeah okay so i think that's though that's the next step is generate the 13 parts and then the final assembly and uh, start printing and testing them. So that's step one is generate the files. Step two, print and test. Print and prototype and test whether it works. Yep, okay. I think we can leave it right here. So any more questions on this? I think we can finish, finish off right here and see how we can distribute this. It's actually gonna get into some other things today. All right. Any any uh, questions? I think, uh, no, not right now. I think I've, I'm I'm trying to leave, so I've got to. I'll get to it maybe um, uh, Sunday or next week. Probably I'll be a little busy the couple of days, but I'll look at it again. Yeah. I had eventually, so and yeah. just put in more questions. I guess in the working docker. Yeah, stuff on the wiki. All right. Uh, Excellent. Uh, Martin. Yeah. I, I'm not sure who else was there. I didn't get introduced as I had to go to class. But I see. Really, was it Abe? This is Abe. So he's one of our core developers on the development team. So he's he's Excellent. been active for, you know, basically since the beginning of the developer program. So for almost two years now. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, he's a core core of our developers. He's working on a, on a power cube and tractor as well. So, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Connie and Caitlin have been sort of just lurking along the whole time okay. and watching the whole, the whole process so it's really yeah. exciting it lines up exactly with what we're doing yeah so and as you Ab absolutely i mean you see it really requires just a bunch of people like the tasks that we have to do i mean they're relatively quick relatively quick to learn 
but you know any build of physical things takes just a lot of steps so that's where the teams could really be leveraged for that excellent yeah so that's great we're really happy to be part of the process and thank you very much again no no thank you yeah all this Thank you for starting the first ever OSE club in the world. That's great. Amazing. Yeah. We're very happy to have these students to have that happening with. Wow, that's a special thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. This is really good. Now, I'm really encouraged because I think we can really get these clubs off the ground, like part of STEM, STEAM education, and getting a lot of people involved in physical prototyping. So I'm very optimistic. You're so, James, we've got the entire world in this post. <laughs> Exactly. We need to spread this process to the entire world that we deliver the promise of public design, like public engineering. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Wow. That's, that's a matter of social justice on a deeper level than just discourse. Wow. That's a matter of the world's future right there. Exactly. And freedom. We're fighting for, on, the, on the forefronts of freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much again. We'll be in touch, I'm very sure. And very nice to meet you peripherally online. Yeah. Excellent. And we'll see you in three weeks. Sounds great. In real life. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. So we'll check out here and continue from there. Perfect. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye.